myself that we could be more than just friends. I know you think that if we move too soon, it will all end. I live in misery when you're not around. I won't be satisfied till we're taking those vows. What's it gonna be? Cause I can't pretend. Don't you wanna be more than friends? Hold me tight and don't let go. Dan Radio style. Hold me tight and don't let go. James Hype featuring Kelly Lee, More Than Friends. That was a pretty cool song. First time I ever heard it. It was good stuff. I like it. Anywho, got a good show here for you, I think. Change emotions to manifest faster, and I, there is more to it. It's not just that simple. we got to give it a title, right? we got to shorten it down to like eight words. Come on, man. Give me a break. So, kind of started off. I want to cover the quick basics, and then we're getting into the meat and the good and the meat and the gravy and the potatoes or whatever whatever is good for you. Maybe the, the quinoa, if it so, so fits. We must believe this to be true. Now, this is why we talk about starting small, right? You start with the little things, parking place, manifesting, uh, you know, green lights, someone handing you a bottle of water, signs. I'm adding to this list now. It's a recent new thing, right? We have to believe. So if you don't believe, if you don't, and I'm not trying to sell you a thing of snake oil here, people. I want you to test this out yourself. The whole thing that we're trying to prove to ourselves is that thought is causation for what we experience. So you intentionally think about something, and then you notice that it seems to happen. Some people, yes, would call that coincidence. Again, I've said many, many, many times, I don't believe in coincidence. But... You know, call it what you want. Sign, symbol, happen for a reason, coincidence, whatever. I was thinking about this, and then it happened. If I call it a coincidence, all right, do it a few more times. And eventually you're going to be like, ah, then there seems to be something to this. Once you've crossed that bridge, right, you kind of believe there's something to this. All right, move forward. I, I Again, th- I, this has been my experience. This is what I share. But I'm not trying to, you know, sell you snake oil. For those of you that question this, for those of you that have friends, Here's a great thing you can tell them. Look, here's what you can do. I can't prove it to you. So that being said, to attract something, we need to have the emotion that that thing would produce. But we need to have that emotion before we experience the thing that we're thinking is supposed to produce that feeling. For example... You want your specific person. I don't know. A few people talk about this. It's kind of rare, but it happens. Sometimes they mention. Maybe you're trying to manifest a house. That'd be cool. Car. Maybe you're trying to do all these things. Maybe you've got just a boyfriend, girlfriend, love, whatever. But you're, if, if you were in that environment right now, if you are in the relationship right now, right now, how would you feel? How would you be feeling if that was happening right now, if you were in your relationship right now, if you were in your new house right now, if you were in your new car right now, how would you feel? And the somewhat tricky part, I'll be honest, is you have to conjure up that feeling in advance. Now, again, the, ma- the imagining is a big part of why we do this. And this, in my mind, again, I think this is where Goddard and Law of Attraction really blend together in a, in a very harmonious way. And I think they're kind of almost two missing pieces of each other. Like they belong together, right? So Goddard's very, very into the, the mental work. It's, you know, he's got a lot of this. It's us pushed out and all that stuff. I got you, right? The whispering, he's got all the, but it's all generally around imagining, speaking as which it is so, being in that place where you feel like that's that, right? I guess uh, at least imagining it with all your senses. Uh, maybe I've not read enough to get into it, but for law of attraction, the big thing is that energy, that feeling, the way you feel. You attract how you are feeling right now. And so for a lot of us, feelings are kind of an interesting thing because ultimately, feelings are kind of built around our beliefs, right? You believe a certain way. So let me kind of step back one half step, right? If something happens and I have a belief about that something, I look at it and go, ooh, and then that ooh makes me feel bad or that cool, and then I feel good, right? So 
something happens. Doesn't really matter what it is per se. We'll get specific. And then I go, huh, this makes me feel this way. And then, right? So I decide that feeling based off of my belief. that I believe it, and thusly it makes me feel. I think I said that wrong. But example would be, maybe, maybe it's raining, right? And if you're someone that maybe lives in like the Pacific Northwest, like Seattle, it's known to rain a lot in Seattle. And people that live in Seattle generally speaking, are not overly fond of rain. It annoys the heck out of them. Their belief is that it rains all the time, so I don't really like it because it's not special. It happens all the time. Yeah, everything's green. Of course, it rains all the time. Why wouldn't it be? Right? That's their belief, and that's how they feel about rain. Right? But say you live in a place that's like the desert or like Southern California, right, where we don't get a lot of rain. We're technically a desert, by the way. So we get, you know, 20 days a year rain. So when it rains here, it's pretty awesome. And we feel generally, most of us, except for the people that come from Seattle, <laughs> we feel pretty cool about it. We're like, yeah, that's sweet. It's raining. Like, that's good for us. We need it. Now, Janet, yeah, we'll just keep it at that. So because we believe rain's a good thing, we believe rain is something that's rare, it's awesome, and thusly, we feel good when it happens. It's the same thing, right? Someone living in Seattle is experiencing rain. Someone here in Southern California experiencing rain. Same thing. Identical. But the way we believe about it shapes everything as far as our feelings. And the feelings are what are causing you to vibrate. That's the energy you're putting out to the universe. That's the law of attraction part of it. That's the, here's what you're attracting back. So when we look at things that happen, and because of the way we believe them to be, feel a certain way, we certainly hear a lot of comments, hear a lot of people mention, you know, things were going so great, and then this happened, and then now I feel horrible, I'm down in the dumps. Always. It's always how we hear. Tell me I'm wrong. This happened, and now I feel bad. So, where we try to focus on what we're trying to accomplish, right? Because that's one of the things I talk about frequently. And we want to make a difference in the speed of our manifestation, right? So, focusing on negative things, no, bad idea. So, trying to understand the specifics of how it plays out. But, again, what we focus on is what we're creating. And what we focus on is generally how we're feeling too, right? When you start thinking about something that you really, really, really like, you generally start to feel better, happier, whatever. Because I'm focusing on a movie, or I'm focusing on a specific game I like to play, or I'm focusing on my specific person, or I'm focusing on doing my job and I love my job and it just brings great gratification when I get to help a patient or whatever, you know, whatever you do. I don't know, right? So when we focus on the things that help us feel better, we kind of have control over our feelings to a degree. Now, I understand there's things that can happen, things that can go out of control, but our key and important thing is to remember I've got these areas that I can kind of either A, refocus on, or more importantly, where I think the what I'm hoping people get, and we'll see, is when things happen to you, you have a choice to believe whatever you want about that thing. You saw some picture on Facebook. Ooh, he's definitely cheating. That's what I believe. So now I go down this rabbit hole of feeling horrible. Or it's some chick. It's a friend, probably. Ah, that doesn't bother me nearly as much. What we choose in the moment to be the belief, to be the reality, well, to be our decided reality, because that is where it comes down to. That is our judgment of what's happening. So if we text them, and they don't text us back within an hour. We believe that's not a good thing. And it starts bumming us out. We go down that road. Or we believe they're busy. 
Maybe they got something going on. This person's awfully busy. They're frequently busy. I'm sure she wants to get to it. I know she cares about me. I know. It's coming. Or, I know he's busy. I know he's looking at it and reading it. He's told me before he likes it when I send him these messages and that he's busy, and sometimes it's hard for him to get right back to me. He's told me this before, and here I am yet already going, he hasn't responded. What do we believe? It's a big difference when you start realizing that the decisions that we made up because of our beliefs or the beliefs that we have because of our decisions, I don't honestly know where one ends and the other meets and what's different about them. But it is that that causes that feeling for us. And remember, what we're feeling is what we're vibrating, what we're attracting. So when we believe something is kind of bad, if we, one, can't control our beliefs about things, that's why it's happening and that's why we're having a hard time. If you want to speed that up, either A, Stop believing right off the bat. You can control that. Like you can give benefit of the doubt. You can do whatever. You still have power. You were stalking them on Facebook. You screwed up there, but let's, right? What? However, sometimes normal stuff comes. Don't get me wrong. But when you feel a certain way about it, that is our decision. That is what we're choosing it means. And unless they've specifically told you something, Sometimes we assume a lot of things, and everybody knows the acronym with assume, right? And that's out of you and me. So sometimes take a step back, give the benefit of the doubt. If you can't do that, because that's really the easiest way to feel better about it, is to not decide it's a bad thing. Somehow, even if you're, I mean, don't lie to yourself, because I don't think that's a good idea ever. But like, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, they're probably busy. Like, if that's not too far a stretch, like, you know, they're busy. Let, let them have it. Now, all of a sudden, you've got something that you can get behind, you can believe, and you feel good about. It doesn't bother you as much. You're like, yeah, and then they bling, they end up texting you anyway. Yeah, sorry, I was busy. I was in a meeting. Oh, I love you, right? It's when we get our energy back, right? When we start feeling all crappy, I've talked about thought transmissions. You're thinking about them. You're feeling crappy. Ah, that doesn't feel good if you're on the receiving end of that. You don't know why. I don't know why all of a sudden I'm not feeling good about someone or eh, I don't feel like talking to them right now or I'm busy or maybe something just manifests in their life. So they actually are busy and they aren't thinking about you at all. They have no idea what's going on. But in their life, all of a sudden something happened because uh, from a higher self standpoint, they were totally willing to allow you to create this environment where you could experience that. We can have whatever we want. We both can experience the same thing. We can experience rain, and I can experience rain. You might not like it. I might like it. What we decide about what's happening to us is key. I know this is going to be hard to grab in a lot of ways. So again, if you can't change the belief part, hopefully look at it. Hopefully look at it like, ah, what is it about the situation that I believe that's helping me feel like this what 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 is it that i'm believing about the situation what is the the judgment what is the decision i have made that must be happening right now that's causing me to feel badly because if you can find that you're looking right at the problem and if you know if it's if you're not given the benefit of the doubt then maybe there's something wrong with the relationship i don't know Maybe that's something that needs to be considered. Maybe we need to try to heal that in some way. Maybe we need to do astral letters to forgive. Maybe we need to do rubbing out to rub it out like an eraser. But looking at it and seeing it helps you identify, ah, man, this is one of the places that I'm killing my energy. And if you can't do that, like I said, then think of something else, please. Please, pretty please. That'll be the only way you can get yourself focused on something that doesn't upset you. If it hurts too much to look at what's driving you nuts right now, because we don't want to feel that way, then think of something cool. Puppy dogs, sunsets, you know, clouds, I don't know, whatever makes you happy. Cotton balls. Maybe cotton balls between your toes while you paint your nails. Doesn't that just sound gorgeous? Any of those things. Whatever you feel up to. I hope this kind of makes sense. I know this is kind of a weird topic, but the way we feel about things 
is key. And being able to identify how we typically screw that up, if we are, how we mess that up is really important. And it's awesome because that's like the area. Again, whenever you find these little things that are like, ah, that's a problem. Ah, that's probably part of why you're where you're at right now. Resolve that. Love that. Hug it. Whatever you got to do. Fix it. Heal it. Touch it. Rub on it. Massage it. Whatever you got to do. You can help that go away, and then it's not there anymore. Now you give the benefit of the doubt. You know, the one thing that that, uh, that uh, uh, recent story we had, Jacqueline, is awesome, but she's right. And the one thing that really comes into this is this is kind of a path that requires some work. None of this is necessarily, I don't want to say it's easy. It should be, frankly. Love should, for sure. But that being said, a lot of us are going after things that are a little outside the norm, right? So we got to work on these things. we got to help heal what it is that got us to wherever we are at right now or help resolve this missing piece where we feel inferior, where we feel like we're not good enough. There's a lot that could be gleaned, a lot that we can learn when we see it, when we come to terms with it, when we find it. Again, when we scratch it, right? Pat it on the back. It's amazing. Again, bring your bring your emotions back to a good place. Hopefully that gets everyone back to, you know, like start feeling better more of the time. And believe me, you will seriously start knowing, noticing differences way, way, way quick. It's uh, it's extremely impressive. Uh, and it is, uh, it's just powerful. So, you know, that's what I'm thinking right now. I'm telling you this. I'm telling you this. Stay in radio style. Hope everybody up is grooving. Uh, we're going to be doing more shows coming up soon, of course, going out with a great song by Ed Sheeran. The song's called Castle on the Hill. I'm on my way.